Hey guys, and welcome to my Sucral Showcase video. I've been getting a lot of requests on making a video about her since my last one. I knew I wanted to wait till after the 1.2 update, just in case there's new content. And luckily I get to showcase her in Dragonspine, against some new enemies. I'm gonna be showcasing two builds, where one focuses on elemental mastery, and the other build focuses on animal damage and crit. And later on I'll compare the two builds and give some tips about them. This is because I think there's multiple plays to play her and I don't think any of them are wrong. It's perfectly fine to play her as a DPS or a support, because it all depends on your build and your team comp. Alright, so without further ado, enjoy! Alright, so these are the builds I'm using for Sucrose. My first build has 918 elemental mastery. Its attack is only 1200, because this timepiece I'm using is also elemental mastery. I have 37% crit rate and 84% crit damage. The energy recharge is only 120%, and I wish I'd gotten more, but I'm using what I got. So you can see my vaporize and melt damage are increased by 110% along with the 1.5 or 2 times multiplier they can give. And you can see the other elemental reactions are increased by 263%, which is an insane increase. And then crystallize, I don't think you'll ever worry about that, because I don't think you'll ever mix an animal and genio character together in the same team. And then the 39% animal damage bonus is the stat that she levels up whenever she ascends. The weapon I'm using is a level 90 rank 5 Sacrificial Fragments. It has 221 elemental mastery, and its passive allows for triple casting her E, and rank 1 is just as good as rank 5. The only artifact set I can recommend is the Viridescent set, and here you can see I have 75 elemental mastery on the flower, 63 on the feather, and 187 on the next 3 pieces. They all have really bad substats, so I don't really want to talk about them, except I guess the circlet. 
And although I have Constellation 6, I think the most important is her first one, because it lets you use her E multiple times, which can help charging her ultimate because it's really costly. And I only have her talents to plus 6, but with the Constellation it makes the 9, and I didn't want to farm any books so they're gonna stay there for now. So switching over to my DPS set. This focuses more on crit damage, crit rate, and animal damage bonus. You can see my timepiece roll all into HP and defense. I'm not satisfied with those subsets for all of them, but they work for now. And I do plan on farming more for Xiao, since I plan on using him as a support and a DPS at the same time. And the weapon I use for this build is a level 90 Lost Prayer to the Sacred Winds. So now my build has 1500 attack, but only 21 elemental mastery. My crit rate is now 68%, 162% crit damage, but now I don't have any energy recharge. And thanks to the animal damage cup, now I have 85.6%. Now in terms of elemental mastery, I previously had 110% increase for vaporize and melt. Now it's just 4. And my other reactions were 263%. And now it's down to 9.8% increase. This means any elemental reactions that happen are just going to be base, and Sucrose is not going to buff anyone at all. But feel free to mix and match. You can give yourself some elemental mastery here and there if you want a DPS set still, so that way at least she can buff some stuff. Alright, now let's go over some comparisons and numbers. I'm going to be testing it out on this Ruin Guard. This is the base damage I hit with a crit on Jin Yan's E. So now let's see how much damage I do while applying a melt reaction and using Sucrose's buffs with her two different builds. So the first test is using my DPS Sucrose build. After proccing the enemy with Pyro, you can see I did 13k crit with 1400 swirl damage. Now I'm trying to apply melt. And now the melt damage is 29k crit. So this all adds up to 44,745 damage. So this is a combo of using DPS Sucrose and applying Melt. So now let's look at a support build. Again I proc Pyro and then I swirl. See here I did way less animal damage but my swirls are higher. After applying Cryo again I go for the Melt. Now you see here my Melt damage is 44k. And in total that makes 53,489. Which in total made me deal a lot more than my DPS build. Although it may be appealing for Sucrose to hit higher numbers, but keep in mind you have a full party. And when she buffs, she buffs everyone in the party, allowing everyone to deal more elemental reaction damage. And this is why I use Sucrose as a support, so that way everyone in the party does high damage. You can make Sucrose hit higher numbers if you want, but everyone else will just hit normal base reaction damage. In case you're wondering how Swirl works, or how to proc Sucrose's passives, all you need is an enemy to have a status proc, and then for Sucrose to hit the enemy with animal damage. Environmental statuses be like being wet from touching water can still spread through Swirl, and if you have more than one element being swirled, it'll all spread. And you don't need multiple enemies to be hit by the swirl effect for it to spread. And in terms of the Viridescent set effect, here's a side-by-side -side comparison of me not using it and using Sucrose to proc it. And as you can see the left side gets a head start in starting the DPS. But the right side still finishes first. So imagine if the fight dragged on longer. Using Viridescent is a huge damage buff. Alright, I hope you guys like this video on my tips and guides as well as the showcase. And see you in the next video. You taste like candy, eat you on a Sunday. I can feel the beat of my heart increase. Cause it tastes like candy.